Hello and welcome. Does the Ryzen 7 5800H still hold up in 2023? This is a very long-term review of the Lenovo IdeaPad 5 Pro 16. For a little over the past year, I've been using the Ryzen 7 5800H Lenovo IdeaPad 5 Pro 16 for my developer workflow, and generally as an all-around use laptop. In this video, I'll give you my very long-term review and see if the now four-year-old CPU can still hold up. I purchased the device in 2021 and have been using it as my primary work device and as my developer machine. I've traveled with it, carried it in my backpack, sat outdoors, at cafes, and locations away from the power outlet, and also used it in direct sunlight, although not successfully. Let's take a look at the specs briefly and I'll give you my walkthrough of the 2021 Lenovo IdeaPad 5 Pro 16 and give you my long-term impressions and experiences throughout my ownership. AMD Ryzen 7 5800H Zen 3 45 watt laptop APU. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 4266 MHz RAM, soldered and not upgradable. 512 gigabytes of PCIe NVMe Gen 3 SSD, which is upgradable, a 16 inch Quad HD Plus 2560 by 1600, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 300 nits display, Realtek Wi Fi and Bluetooth 5.0, a 720p webcam and Windows IR camera for Windows Hello support, 70 watt hour battery and a 130 watt USB Type-C power adapter, and all coming in at a weight of 4.4 pounds. The Ryzen 7 5800H features eight cores and 16 threads at a configurable TDP of 35 to 45 watts, and a base clock speed of 3.2 gigahertz, boosting up to 4.4 gigahertz. It is part of AMD's Zen 3 architecture family of CPUs and it features four megabytes of L2 cache and 16 megabytes of L3 cache. It is part of AMD's Zen 3 APU family. Build quality. The device is a metal body with an all aluminum build and has held up very well. Aside from dropping the device several times resulting in scratches on the metal edges, the device has stood the test of time. No issues with the hinge or any other physical aspect of this device during my ownership. Another thing to note is that this device is very easy to get into with just some screws on the bottom panel and no annoying tabs or plastic pieces that might get broken as you attempt to invade its insides. I've opened the device on several occasions and the bottom panel screws and their threads are still holding very well. Thank you for this level of access and ease, Lenovo. Ports. This device is well appointed with ports. The front and back of the device are bare. The back of the device features a large exhaust vent for heat. The front of the device features a lip for the housing where the camera and infrared sensor are housed, thus providing a nice place for you to grab and open the cover. It does not open with one hand easily because it's not so well balanced, however. The left side of the device features a USB type C charging port, a full sized HDMI 2.0 B port, another USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-C port, and a combination headphone microphone jack. The right side of the device houses two USB-A ports, one of which has always-on support for charging, and a full-sized SD card slot, which protrudes about halfway with the card inserted, and two indicator lights. I don't think I've really ever noticed the LED lights since they're on the side, and this is not a two-in-one device. In my experience, this is due to the fact that Lenovo uses the same chassis, the same keyboard, and other parts for many, many models and devices. It is quite staggering and very confusing how many devices annually Lenovo produces that look far too much the same. Display. The display is a 16 inch affair with quad HD plus resolutions that's 2560 by 1600 pixels at a 16 by 10 aspect ratio at a 60 hertz refresh rate and 300 nits of brightness. In this price range, such a device and resolution was still fairly rare at the time of purchase. Another nice feature is that the display folds back 180 degrees to lay flat on the table. My one big issue with the display has been uniformity and clarity due to low luminance as the brightness is reduced from 100%. 
In my use and experience, below 80%, the brightness and luminance of this display falls off so sharply that at 50% brightness, this display becomes unusable. It loses so much saturation, uniformity, luminance, and thus color that it becomes a mess. This has been my biggest pain point with this laptop and one of the main reasons that I'm finally sick of it and looking to get a better display. I've been fortunate enough to see and use the MacBook Pro 16 display and wow, what an experience. I'm just amazed at what Apple's able to achieve. And I know that not all of that is due to software. I'm looking forward to reviewing devices this year that do away with such issues. Thus far, all of the laptops that I've reviewed, the displays have been exceptional. Speakers and sound. There are two downward firing speakers on the bottom of the device with cutouts on the side to help spread the sound. It does not do a very good job, particularly when placed on a soft surface or even heavy clothing such as pajamas and muffles the sound greatly. On a desk, it's sufficient for video conferencing and meetings without the need for headphones. It's also enjoyable for movies and entertainment as long as the ambient noise is kept to a minimum. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth The IdeaPad 5 Pro 16 came with a Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0 courtesy of a Realtek module. The reception and overall speed was so bad that at times I would see the transfer rates halt to zero, causing the connection to essentially drop. That resulted in poor overall connectivity and dropping from meetings, a great source of frustration. It did not take long, however, for me to realize that I had to solve this issue. A quick trip over to Amazon and purchasing an Intel Wi-Fi 6 card with Bluetooth 5.2 and I've never looked back or worried about Wi-Fi connection, speed or transfer rate since. And the Bluetooth 5.2 brought much more stable connections for truly wireless headphones of which I've used nearly half a dozen over the past two years with this device. An excellent pairing for meetings, movies, and music while I work. Keyboard. Lenovo is known for making some excellent keyboards. Although in more recent years, they've got me wondering if they've lost touch a bit or just recycling and rehashing the parts to make numerous models with the same parts essentially. It doesn't take long and a quick study will show you how many of their parts are actually recycled amongst devices. I understand that it helps to keep R&D costs down, but do you really need to litter the market with, with similar looking models that are hard to discern and even harder to pin down or describe based on the model number and the naming scheme alone? The keyboard on this device has been okay. It's somewhat flat and has pretty low key travel. Though I've been using it now for more than a year and I'm pretty used to this keyboard when on the go. In daily use, I have this connected to my Logitech G915 TKL keyboard, that's 10 keyless, that, produce, that boosts my productivity tremendously. My only complaint about the keyboard is the squished numpad on the side. Why not just give us a centered keyboard without, centered keyboard without the numpad, Lenovo? Again, an area where parts are shared and designs are recycled. trackpad. The trackpad is a Windows Precision trackpad and it's been mostly good. I use tap to click but on the occasion that I have had to press the trackpad I have not noticed any creaking, looseness, wobbling or anything of the like. For the life of me I cannot understand why Apple's trackpads are so good at palm rejection and multi-touch gestures. 
I still on occasion manage to trigger the wrong shortcut or call up the Windows task view when I did not intend to do so. Thermals and fan noise. This device runs silent and I was so amazed when I got it. I could not believe that even in my heavy developer workflow with lots of apps running, the fans basically never kicked on. I know that Lenovo tuned this behavior further with a few BIOS updates and the fans essentially never turn on now. Truly an amazing device for office work, meetings, and video conferencing. I have loved this so much that I'm starting to note and be irritated by the amount of noise on some of the gaming laptops that I've been testing. Even during Windows updates or reinstalls, the device fans do kick in but are so inaudible that I would easily guess that they're below 40 decibels. And when you launch a program or do something that kicks the CPU into high gear with bursts of power, you never hear the fans spin up and down randomly. Before this device, I had purchased an Acer and the constant and random spinning up and down of the fans was a deal breaker. Battery life. It has been overall pleasant to use this device away from the wall and battery life is generally good. During my typical workday, I can get between four to six hours of use depending on how heavily I'm using it that day. Some days it's mostly meetings and others days it's heavy coding, compiling, testing, multiple browsers, searching, so the use case really varies. One downside of this is that it puts the display into a low power mode, which reduces the clarity greatly since the backlight does not reduce evenly. And the 130 watt USB type C charger provides enough quick charge to get back up to 50% in just a little, little over half an hour. And the adapter itself is so small, compact and light that I've never felt overburdened carrying it around. Performance. Since this device is meant for office use, it does not have a dedicated GPU. The GPU in this device is the integrated GPU on the Ryzen 7 5800H and is sufficient to do the job. Even 4K Netflix and streaming are not an issue with other apps open in the background. It chews through my Docker workflows, Windows subsystem for Linux and everything I've thrown at it. At one point, I was even triple booting and running Fedora Linux, Ubuntu, and Windows 11 for my work and testing. The compatibility of all the components in this device has also been a joy. I did not have any issues with features such as sound or keyboard backlight, or especially Wi-Fi or Bluetooth running and being supported under Fedora or Ubuntu. And for those of you that use Linux, on your laptops, you'll know exactly the pain it can be to get some of these components working if they're not supported out of the box or if the manufacturers don't provide Linux drivers. Intel's Wi-Fi drivers have been excellent and with both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity. The only real issue I've had is running into a RAM limit with well over 90% of the system RAM being utilized on the daily basis and thus lots of paging activity with Windows 11 writing memory contents to disk which impacts overall performance and responsiveness. And since the RAM on this thin and light device is soldered to the motherboard, expanding it was impossible. The Ryzen 7 5800H has fulfilled every requirement I've had of it and exceeded my expectations. At the time of purchase, the options from Intel included mostly quad-core Tiger Lake offerings, an amazing machine and an amazing CPU with tremendous amounts of performance. Truly astounding what AMD was able to achieve with Zen 3. Absolutely zero complaints in the CPU and performance department aside from the soldered RAM. In fact, I've become so comfortable with the level of performance of this device that despite testing with all the new and powerful gaming laptops, I keep coming back to the IdeaPad 5 Pro 16. I've tried on numerous occasions to let go of it and to adopt one of the many new gaming laptops I've reviewed as my permanent daily driver and work device. But something about the combination of all the components that are in this device just provides such a good experience that it's been hard to let go. Nevertheless, I'll be looking for a machine with a larger Quad HD display as I like to use 125% scaling in Windows to get that much more real estate than a full HD 1080p resolution. And I'll be looking for 32 gigabytes of DDR5 5600 megahertz or faster RAM so that it can last me for years. And if it can also handle my gaming and video editing workflows, it'll be the full mobility solution I'm after. Price. To say that I got a steal of a deal would be the right statement. I purchased this device from the now defunct Microsoft physical store in Canada. 
It was on a great sale, down from about $1,400 to $949, and I simply could not pass it up. With the specs and the right CPU, I was 100% set on AMD at the time, I can say now that it was absolutely the right choice. The Lenovo IdeaPad 5 Pro 16 will stay in my home and in my family for years to come. In conclusion, you don't need the latest and greatest tech and to be constantly upgrading your device. In fact, for most people, that is the case. But for tech enthusiasts such as myself, it can be sometimes hard to resist the urge to have the latest and greatest shiny new toy. To say that the device has paid for itself would also be an understatement. I only wish that we could have more products like this that deliver exceptional value and are excellent long-term experiences. Particularly now that we live in an age of planned obsolescence. Manufacturers and companies purposely degrading devices via software updates to force consumers into buying a new device when otherwise it would have served them for years more to come. I'm also resisting the urge to jump into the Apple camp, even though I've used MacBooks and Windows machines simultaneously in professional and personal use since at least 1995. Being locked into the Apple ecosystem is a scary thought, and I'll have to elaborate further. But that's another video and another discussion for another day. What do you think? Do you have an older device that you're just completely amazed by and has served you so well that you have nothing but praise and admiration for it? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed my content, please like and share this video on your social media channels to help grow this channel. And of course, subscribe for more thoughtful and insightful content in the future. See you in the next one.